Hi and welcome to Helicopter Train Videos. This is part three of three on weight and balance. If you've missed the previous two, um, go and find those out. And uh, as we've already said, weight and balance is all about how we load the helicopter. In the previous lessons, we looked at the definitions and how to actually determine weight and balance. And in this one, we're in this part, we're going to talk about how to manage weight and balance. So how can we make some adjustments? Let's say we're overweight or uh, you know, what can we do about it? Well, a couple of things we can do. We can remove the doors if the weather's conducive to that. We could reduce the fuel. As long as we're still carrying the safe amount of fuel, we don't always have to run at full fuel. Or maybe we consider uh, making it in two trips. Maybe we'll drop the passenger off first and then come back and pick up his baggage and drop the baggage off. What about center of gravity adjustments? Let's say uh, we're you know, uh, out of center of gravity to fall back or forward or left or right, we can we can again make adjustments to the fuel. Uh, if the helicopter was bigger than an R22, we might have some options about where we could put our passengers. Perhaps we could put the heavier passenger opposite the heavier fuel tank. Um, and we could also, even in the R22, we can mess around with the baggage options. Say, for example, if uh, I'm flying 190 pounds and the passenger I'm flying with is uh, 100 pounds, I'll take my headset case and any other baggage I have and I'll put it under their seat. Again, as long as it's within safe limits. Uh, so there's a few ways we can work to adjust the center of gravity. Fuel burn off. This is, uh, we kind of talked about this already. As, as we um, burn off fuel, um, we're losing, for every gallon of fuel that we burn off, that's six pounds. That's the, uh, the weight, average weight of, of uh, a gallon of AV gas. The R22 has a burn rate of around 10 gallons an hour. So in an hour's flight, you've lost around 60 gallons, sorry, 60 pounds of fuel. So that's going to then shift the weight forward. If you still have the, sorry, it's not going to shift the weight forward, it's going to shift the center of gravity forward because your passengers and yourself are still weighing the same, but you have got less fuel at the back. So you're going to have this shift going on. So this is why we make those calculations for the fuel that we're carrying and for when we're empty so we can predict how that's going to react. But in most situations you can uh, anticipate that when you come into land if you've got fuel tanks behind you that have been depleted whilst flying you're going to land with a more of a nose down attitude. Now the effects of overloading. Um, I think it goes without saying that overloading is dangerous and uh, also illegal. Uh, it says in the POH that you must always fly within the weight limitations. But uh, even when you're close to the, uh, the limit, you're going to experience some of these effects. You're going to have longer takeoff and landing. Um, so you're not going to be able to just pull up straight out of a uh, you know, little hole in the forest. You're going to need more distance to get the speed up while you're in ground effect. And we'll talk about all the aerodynamics effects here. But basically, you have a longer takeoff and landing. You're going to put excessive loads on the structure, which could cause damage or even failure. Your overall maneuverability is reduced. Um, you know, obviously, it's harder to swing heavier things around. Um, your rate and angle of climb is reduced, and your service seating is reduced. And finally, your cruise range and your speed is reduced. Then we're talking about um, getting your center of gravity beyond limits. Let's say that you have your center of gravity too far forward. Uh, the center of lift, or the CL, acts uh, at the top of the rotor mast. That's where that's going to be hanging, uh, basically hanging the helicopter from that point. So if the center of gravity, as you can see in this diagram, is further forward, it's going to swing the nose of the helicopter down and underneath that C uh, center of lift. And one of the problems is you may not be able to pull back. You might not have enough uh, authority to be able to pull back to decelerate as you're coming into land. You may not be able to flare in an auto rotation, and in the future we'll talk about what that means. And this situation is made worse as the fuel is consumed because you'll lose less weight, uh, you'll have even less weight in the back, and that's going to push your nose even further forward. This is the opposite. Let's say you have a lot of fuel. Maybe you're a solar pilot with full fuel, and uh, so you don't have much weight in front, but you have a lot of weight behind, and this will cause the nose to fly high. This can cause problems. Uh, you would be holding the controls pretty far forward just to hold yourself in a hover. And uh, if you get a gust that may flap the blades up, you might not have enough control movement left to try and counter that, and that can flap the blades back and cause a boom strike. 
You also suffer the risk of having a possible tail strike on landing with that low tail as you come into uh, land. And then maybe you have a, um, as we sort of talked about, a 200 pound person on one side and a 100 pound on the other. And um, if that's the same side as the heavy fuel tank and you maybe have loaded the baggage, you, you'll be sitting potentially outside of your CG limits left and right. This may cause loss of control or something called dynamic rollover, which is basically catching a skid as you're picking up or putting down and rolling the helicopter over. And again, this may be worse, made worse uh, as the fuel is consumed, depending on what side the problem was on. All right, so that is weight and balance management done. Uh, if you haven't already seen the other two videos, these the definitions and determinations, go find those out. Uh, if you want more information, uh, a good place to start looking is the R22 POH in the limitations and weight and balance section. Also check out the FAA's uh, rotorcraft, rotorcraft or flying helicopter flying handbook. They have a weight and balance section. You can also get the ASA helicopter oral exam guide and the private test prep books that have a weight and balance section. And the FAA also has a pretty good weight and balance handbook, which you can find faa.gov forward slash library forward slash manuals. I've already said it before, keep practicing these weight and balance problems till you make sure you uh, get your head around it. It will come up in your written and it will uh, be something you might have to do for your actual uh, oral check ride. Uh, any feedback, questions, please send them on and I look forward to sharing another video with you soon.